no matter what, we are not ending this night without White Castle in our stomachs. Agreed? Agreed. White Castle may be famous for their classic sliders, but what aren't they telling you? Let's find out with 10 secrets White Castle doesn't want you to know. Secrets? I have no secrets. The burgers have holes in them. My thoughts are its thoughts. Its holes are my holes. In 1954, a burger flipper at White Castle in Cincinnati wrote a message in the store's feedback box. Earl Howell's notion was that poking holes in the White Castle patties would let them cook faster and allow the kitchen to keep up with the increased demand. Earl was attempting to find out how he could get the burgers out faster because the business was overwhelmed. His theory was put to the test by the chain, and it proved to be true. By the end of the year, every White Castle burger in America had five holes, and Earl Howell was admitted into the White Castle Employee Hall of Fame. Yes, there is indeed a White Castle Hall of Fame. Really? Really, really. And Earl is one of its most illustrious members. Just in case anyone thought it was a joke, this isn't a joke. To grasp why this unconventional method is effective on White Castle burgers, you must first realize how they make them. Instead of being grilled, White Castle burgers are steamed. On the grill, they lay 30 patties, exactly the same amount as in a Crave box, on top of a mound of onions. This guarantees a consistent cooking surface all across the patties and removes the need to turn them because they're being steamed. It also means they'll spend less time on the grills and be ready to serve their food sooner. There are no sites in their native state. Please tell me there's another White Castle in town. No. The utter lack of a White Castle restaurant in one's home state may look strange and even cruel to a die-hard White Castle fan. Despite the fact that the firm was started in Wichita, Kansas, there isn't a single White Castle in the city. The corporation packed up and relocated its primary offices to Columbus, Ohio in 1933, where it has remained since. Kansas hasn't had a White Castle in more than 80 years. That's too long. The last one closed in 1938. In 2011, the chain set up a pop-up shop in Wichita for a single day to commemorate their 90th anniversary. Or maybe to annoy Kansas supporters. Knowing they originated in Wichita, the chain thought it would be a great occasion to bring together some of the founder's family members. Before the business packed up and headed for the Buckeye State, hungry fans could get two sliders for 99 cents. Today, if a Kansan has a taste for a fresh White Castle slider, they must travel out of state to Columbia, Missouri. What a cruel joke for the poor, burger-loving folks of Wichita. Harold and Kumar were close to not choosing White Castle. I'm sorry. I didn't even know you. Had White Castle some little, um... A while back, the business welcomed a set of hungry clients that have since become cult favorites in certain circles. We're speaking, of course, about marijuana enthusiasts, and White Castle's appearance in the 2004 film Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle. To throw some movie trivia at you, White Castle's major part almost didn't materialize, since the screenwriters had the two buddies hunting for Krispy Kreme donuts instead. After Krispy Kreme dropped out, a fake hot dog vendor was substituted. Eventually, the filmmakers contacted White Castle management, who were more enthusiastic about the concept. Let's do it! Let's do it! White Castle's director of marketing at the time characterized it as a love letter to the company. According to many White Castle employees, the way the screenplay conveyed how people felt about the sliders and the extent they'll go to eat them was quite realistic. Late night slider cravings aren't the stuff of Hollywood fantasy. When compared to eight other fast food businesses, White Castle came out on top in a study that looked at eating patterns between the hours of 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. According to the study, that late night six hour period accounts for a whopping 21% of the chain's revenue. There's nothing like pounding down some sliders to cure your midnight munchies. And White Castle is the mecca of sliders. They got in some trouble over the size of their booths. Hey, I didn't go looking for trouble. Trouble came a knocking and. So, here's the problem with being a little too fond of White Castle, or any other fast food joint for that matter. If you eat there often without any physical exercise, you might gain enough weight that you can no longer dine inside the restaurant you enjoy. It's a catch 22 that White Castle aficionado Martin Kessman is all too familiar with. For the past 50 years, Kessman has been a loyal White Castle client, but his diet of sliders caused him to gain so much weight that he can no longer fit into his local White Castle booth in Nanuit, New York. I'm fat! Because White Castle did not provide him with six extra inches of gut room, Kessman filed a lawsuit under the Americans with Disabilities Act. 
Instead of waiting for his local White Castle to create larger booths or take an even more extreme step and shed a few pounds, he opted to sue the brand. When Kessman tried to fit in one of the tables and damaged his knee in the process, the lack of gut room became a serious issue. Rather than completely avoid White Castle burgers, Kessman had his spouse pick up his slider stockpile while he rested at home. The complaint was subsequently abandoned once White Castle offered adequate gut space and additional seats. Only in America could something like this actually happen and be taken seriously. One of the original locations sold for only $1. One dollar. Thank you, Lewis. While the majority of today's White Castle restaurants have drive throughs and are much larger than their predecessors, several of the original White Castle structures remain. In 1927, the third White Castle restaurant debuted in Indianapolis, Indiana, and stayed open until 1979, making it the country's longest-running White Castle at the time. In 2011, the National Park Service designated the modest white brick structure as a historic monument. How many burger places can boast such a claim? Despite its past, the building hasn't always been a promising real estate item. It sat vacant for 15 years after acting as a real estate office and then a National Guard recruitment office. It was purchased from the National Guard for $1 in 2017 by Indiana Landmarks. VIP prices. After that, Indiana Landmarks put it up for sale for $70,000, where it remained for two years before being acquired. With a few caveats, of course. According to the building's current owner, part of the deal from acquiring it from Indiana Landmarks is that the buyer must restore the outside brick back to its original look. The renovation will be handled by a professional brick mason from Texas. While it's unlikely to become a White Castle restaurant once more, the owner is optimistic that he can find a long-term tenant who recognizes the importance of the building's history, which formerly only had room for five seats. They've had more than a few imitators. Everything's a copy of a copy of a copy. When it comes to a multi-million dollar company with a lengthy history, the adage, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, is especially true. Over the years, White Castle has had a slew of imitators, with the most of them becoming a blip in fast food history. Early on, White Castle was viewed as just another cheap food trend. But its little square burgers were so popular that the business was emulated by competitors large and small. Burger King had their own variation of the sandwich called the Burger Bundle in the 1980s, while KFC had its Chicken Little Sliders. While Chicken Littles and Burger Bundles are no longer available, White Castle saw the emergence of smaller burger places with the audacity to copy the White Castle brand and building style. You sit on a throne of lies. California now has its own copy of White Castle in the form of Coastal Castle, a slider restaurant. White Castle didn't make that burger popular. That burger made White Castle popular, according to the president of Coastal Castle in 1985. Understandably, White Castle did not agree with this comment. They've spent 65 years developing a reputation, and they don't plan to let anyone profit from it. Coastal Castle, to cut a long tail short, is no longer in existence. White Tower, Royal Castle, and White Palace are examples of imitators that have come and gone as well. Meanwhile, White Castle's Craver Nation continues to grow. They did a study to prove that their food was healthy. Until you start serving healthy food, the midday mommies are pulling you from snack rotation. In the 1930s, hamburgers were considered an awful mixture of mysterious meats. That's still true now, but it was worse back then. Nutritional manuals warned that eating hamburgers was like eating arsenic. White Castle did the only logical thing at the time and set out to scientifically prove that hamburgers could and should be eaten. A White Castle co-founder asked a university professor to demonstrate that individuals could consume the White Castle burgers and remain healthy. The test subject was Bernard Flesh, a medical student at the institution. Yes, hi, my last name is Bernard. He only ate White Castle burgers and drank water for a whole 13-week period. At first, the thought of free food looked appealing, but after a few weeks, he was sick of sliders. But he somehow persevered and finished the 13-week regimen, consuming up to 20 sliders every day. According to the findings, humans could consume nothing but the sandwiches and water and remain in perfect health. The findings were then turned into an ad campaign and did great for sales, which increased by more than three times during that decade. 
Flesh went on to become a doctor before passing away at the age of 54 due to heart difficulties. His daughter notably said that her dad never ate burgers again out of choice. There's a rumor that the onions aren't actually real onions. Layers! Onions have layers. According to internet rumors, the onions in White Castle burgers aren't actually onions. They're actually little cabbage segments that have been soaked in onion juice. Is there a chance this allegation is true? Onions are an important ingredient of the White Castle burger recipe. A White Castle slider wouldn't be a slider without onions. The burgers are cooked atop a bed of sizzling onions, which assist the burger patties and buns to steam during the cooking process. That would be a bizarre twist if the onions weren't real, and it's a foolish one at that. Cabbage cooked on a flat top grill lacks the texture of onions and has a harsh flavor. Furthermore, immersing cabbage pieces in onion juice would not make them taste like onions. They'd taste like onion-like cabbage chunks. I'm telling you, something's wrong. Another thing to examine is why the corporation would want to do this in the first place. They wouldn't save money by using onion juice. It is completely illogical. Anyone who believes the onions on a White Castle burger aren't onions has clearly never visited White Castle or even eaten onions. It is a ludicrous urban legend. The chain professes they use dried onions in their burgers, as they've done since World War II back when onions were rationed and scarce. Look for dried onion chunks in the spice section the next time you're at a grocery store, and you'll notice the exact sort of onions White Castle uses. Of course, they rehydrate them first. They once outsold McDonald's, but dropped the ball. The press were just wondering what it feels like to be outsold, outclassed, outquaffed, and... McDonald's used to display banners boasting how many hamburgers it had sold over the years, but they stopped tracking in 1994. By 1958, it had sold just 100 million burgers, whereas White Castle boasted three years later that it had sold 1 billion burgers, becoming the first chain to achieve this feat. The creator did drop the ball, though, by refusing to franchise White Castle and insisted on having complete control over all the locations. I tend to play by my own rules. As competitors such as McDonald's gained footing, he dragged his heels on television ads and even refused selling french fries. He also hesitated to recruit women or persons of color, but finally gave in. Meanwhile, McDonald's was launching its march to global dominance. They got involved with some political bickering with Whataburger. We got a cold green now running low on propane at the Whataburger. In one of the stranger episodes in the company's history, White Castle joined in some political bickering between Texas Senator Ted Cruz, 2020 presidential hopeful Beto O'Rourke, and Texas burger staple Whataburger. In August 2018, Cruz's spokeswoman referred to O'Rourke as a triple meat Whataburger leftist who is out of touch with Texas values. At the time, the politicians were both campaigning for a U.S. Senate seat. This brought up some unusual trash talk, as many Texans were quick to exclaim on social media how much they loved triple meat Whataburgers. Can't imagine my life without them. Cruz then retorted that he was a huge lover of White Castle burgers, only adding to the general confusion. If it weren't for the fact that White Castle doesn't even have a single location in Texas, the remark wouldn't have seemed so strange. Many people poked fun at the bizarre political situation, and one filmmaker even created a short commercial featuring a character from his film Bernie who was as perplexed by the remark as the rest of the state. Maybe one day White Castle will open a location in Texas where Cruz and O'Rourke can settle their differences over a case of sliders. Thanks for watching right to the end. You're the best, and the best deserves more. So check out more great videos.